Hi, welcome to Lab 3. So, first part of this is going to be talking about um, some common booting issues after you've finished Lab 2. Um, basically, it's sort of just covering some things that you might see. So, if you see anything like this, uh, you might find some help in these next steps. I'm going to start with Part 2, which is booting into single user mode. This is going to um, require us to um, change the grub uh, settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up CentOS 1, as you can see, and when the grub menu appears, I'm going to press E for edit. So what does that look like? I'm going to um, open my CentOS 1 over here. Um, I'm going to start it. I'll let that start. It may take a little bit of time, at least it has for me. Um, you might, your mileage may vary, of course. The one thing to make sure that you do uh, during this, make sure you click in inside the window to make sure that um, all your key presses and mouse clicks are being uh, captured by that virtual machine. I hit E, and so I've now got into some sort of menu over here. Um, let me click in here as well. So I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to be seeing right here. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so. So I'm looking for Linux, either Linux, Linux 16, or Linux EFI, and type the word single as an argument after quiet. Okay, so I think I see Linux C over here. And what I want to do is scroll all the way over here. I'm going to be looking for quiet. And after this, I want to type in single as an argument. Okay, so once that's done, I'll hit Control X. This is going to reboot and I should see only a terminal screen. And one thing that you might notice is um, you might have to scroll down to see the rest of this menu. So it's going to ask me for my root password. Let me type that in. Okay, so now I've got some sort of command prompt. And the first thing I'm going to do is use df-h. So df is something that you might have talked about in your ULI 101. Uh, this is a command that will list sort of the, um, the mounted partitions. And so here is one place where you might be looking for, uh, for example, any, any um, weird errors or um, something that looks amiss. So for example, I can look in the um, root. Um, I'm losing my mouse, but you know where, where to look. So the first, um, the, first, um, the first thing that's mounted is root there. And you can see that I've used 3.9 gigs. I have 7.8 gigs available. Um, if you see that this is 0%, then you've got a problem, and uh, you might have to go. Um, it, well, it might be caused by not following steps to create a compressed copy of VM images. You might have just like you know, um, you might have just filled up your drive basically. Um, in this case, you would have to like delete your largest backup and just get rid of it. Next thing we're covering is how you could um, reset your uh, root password if you forgot it for some reason. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to reboot CentOS 1. I'm going to try to do the same thing as before. Um, as soon as I see that grub menu, I am going to hit E. So now I am editing the um, startup options basically. So if if you follow the instructions, I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to find something like Linux or Linux 16 or Linux EFI. Um, I can see it right here. So what I need to do here is scroll all the way around 
because remember this is one very 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 long um, command basically or one very long line that's just being wrapped around um, so I'm going to change RO to RW and I'm going to add init equals sysroot slash bin slash sh um, if you have any concerns about this I recommend you know take a look at the diagram that we've got on the lab uh, so now that I've done that I can hit control X and what we should see is that it's going to boot into a text menu uh, without asking us for a root password or anything like that so now what we can do type in ch root and slash sysroot okay and then I could do this so password or password it always looks weird to me but password root uh, will change the password for our root user so you'll get something like this it'll ask you for a new password and you can enter it um, since I don't want to change my root password what I'll just do is hit control C uh, to get out of that and um, I'll just reboot because um, I'm pretty much done with this okay and it looks like I might have the issue uh, where it's not letting me reboot so I'll go to the top of the menu I'll look for send key and I'll try to send control alt delete so there we go and I should get back here this time I just want to make sure I can get uh, boot in normally so I'm not going to press E and I'm not going to edit anything and hopefully what I should see is getting back into the normal interface okay so now we've uh, finished with the steps where we're working with the grub menu we're gonna move on to investigation 2 this is gonna happen in your CentOS 3 virtual machine um, I'm not gonna follow these steps because it should be st fairly straightforward I'll just talk about a little bit about these applications so tar is a command that traditionally has been used to create uh, tape backups uh, believe it or not a lot of data centers will still use tapes to back up um, their data basically uh, it might not be like you know the first backup but it's like the second backup that you might ship off to a bunker somewhere in case there's a fire in your in your location anyway redundancy is incredibly important so cassettes are still a way that people do that um, so the C has to uh, stands for create when you move down here the X is for extract it's a very uh, quick and easy way of remembering how stuff basically works uh, for the rest of the detail you I don't know there's not many people who have it actually memorized but um, well the easiest thing is to be able to do it once and then go and put that into a script so you never actually have to remember what all those little options and flags may actually mean so you're gonna follow these steps uh, but I'm gonna skip it for now because it should be fairly straightforward I'm gonna move on to investigation number three so investigation number three has to do with um, installing software in several different ways um, so what I'm going to do I am in C7 host now um, first time I did this I did this in the wrong virtual machine so I had to go back and do it again uh, so let that be a lesson always read the instructions carefully uh, otherwise you end up redoing a lot of work so I am in C7 host I am logged in as root uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is use yum install and uh, they're asking you to install something called elinks so that's what I'm going to do um, what you see here at the beginning is us checking uh, a bunch of different repositories that exist and uh, I'm just gonna let that resolve uh, for whatever reason it's kinda slow my internet over at my house uh, right now so just bear with me so what you see here is it's installing elinks and that's great and this is the version um, in addition to that we have a bunch of uh, dependencies that we need to get so JS might be JavaScript I'm not sure doesn't really matter um, I'm gonna hit yes I'm going to allow that it's gonna download 
and then it's going to install and then we verify and it's great so the next thing we can do is do yum info and this is going to give us some information about the application that we downloaded uh, you can see it's elinks it's a test based web browser so if you feel like browsing the web in you know circa 1986 or something you know go ahead and do it uh, from here you can see that it is installed so that's great uh, so that's kind of a handy useful way of checking up on things um, I don't need this so I'm just gonna uh, remove it for now I'm gonna say yes and it's complete so the next thing we're doing is we're going to be installing a program called XChat and what they're gonna ask you to do is um, basically download the binary from this location here and then we're gonna do a local installation so we're not grabbing it from a repository or at least we're not using the package manager manager to be grabbing it from any repository we're just downloading it from the internet um, so I'm gonna copy this link location over here Let's get rid of this and I should be able to just paste this in and if I try to run it like this it's not gonna work um, but I'm gonna use control a to get to the very front of this command and I'm gonna put in wget so wget is a program to basically download whatever it finds at this location I'm gonna go here and uh, if all goes well we should see a little dialog box or a sorry uh, like a progress bar fill up and we've finished downloading it so um, something that uh, catches a lot of students off guard is where is this thing being downloaded um, so when I logged in I logged into my root directory and that's where I am right now and so if I take a look there it is xchat um, to actually install this binary we're gonna do yum local install all one word and I'm going to use tab to autocomplete this because I really don't feel like typing in all those numbers and dots and dashes and things I'll probably get it wrong so there we go you're gonna get a screen that looks a lot like this I'm gonna say yes we will download it and then we can run it and what you'll see is it tells you that you should not be running this as root that it's stupid so I'm actually going to close control D will log me out very quickly and I can just do the same thing again so what is XChat well IRC way 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 back in the long distant past uh, was a protocol that we could use to basically talk to other people and um, it's pretty cool it's still like well used and popular there's a lot of people online and use it and um, it's a, definitely a different sort of experience if you're you know used to Facebook or something um, we still have a channel up for sort of uh, Seneca based stuff um, nobody really uses it but hey here it is so it might be something that you want to explore at some point or maybe not who knows so the next thing that we're gonna do is run a yum repo list so the first thing I'm gonna do um, I will remember that I am not root and I would need to be root so let's get into there so I'm gonna run rum yum sorry yum repo list and what you'll see is this lists out the actual repositories that we're like subscribed to if you want to say that um, this is where I'm grabbing a bunch this is where I'm grabbing all the software and all the updates that um, that you basically need during a yum update okay you'll see CentOS 7 base extras and updates I have something that you don't have which is Tilix which is um, sort of a multi-pane um, terminal which I enjoy using just because I like being able to have different uh, uh, panes and basically work like that um, so what it does it looks like this you can open it you can have different panes and stuff like that um, if you are interested in something like that I encourage you take a look at the uh, instructions there should be instructions online um, but maybe 
finish the lab before you attempt it because you're basically following the same steps in this lab that you would need to actually do it there. Um, so speaking of which, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install another repository. And what this is going to do is give us um, more software that we can install and update and remove um, during our normal yum update commands and things like that. Um, so the first thing I'll do, let me go back, click on here. I'm going to do yum install epel release. And you'll find out what that means in a second. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to say yes. We're going to wait for the packages to get downloaded and we can run repo list again just to verify that everything went, uh, you know, as expected. We'll give that a moment. Um, probably what's going to do right now is just um, check databases and things like that and basically give us a little bit of a summary of what's going on. So we're going to wait for that to finish. Okay, and if you'll p notice, um, the number of repositories that we have now is increased. Um, I had four, you had three. Now I have five and you have four, unless you decide to install Tilex or something else yourself. Um, you can see that EPEL stands for Extra Packages for Enterpri Enterprise Linux. Sorry. So now we've got that installed and should be good to go. So I'm going to move on to part two. Okay, so finally our last step is going to be um, downloading source code and then um, basically making and compiling the source code into an executable that we will be able to run and use. Um, so the first part of this process is we're going to run a command called which and this is just to demonstrate that should, there should be nothing installed called L breakout. Okay? And you can see the message is that there is no L breakout in any of these locations that we're searching. Um, if you remember from ULI 101, this would probably be the uh, directories that are in your um, path uh, variable. So, nothing here, right? Um, as part of the uh, instructions, they're going to ask you to do a net search for the pattern L breakout 2. This is just a fancy way to say Google it. Okay, so I'm going to Google L breakout tar.gz or, you know, duckduckgo or whatever you feel like using. Uh, we're going to click on here. I'm going to find the source code over here. Warning, this game is no longer maintained. Consider playing the remake. Eh, we'll just, we'll, we'll stick with this one for now. Um, so I'm going to go and hopefully I'll be able to find the actual link or it's going to download for me. Great. Okay, so I'm just going to save this file in case I make a mistake the first time or something goes wrong. So I'm going to save this. We're going to wait for it to complete. That was really quick. I can go back. So now we have sort of like Worlds Collide where we have like the uh, graphical user interface stuff and the um, terminal-based stuff. And we're trying to get you to get familiar with the terminal, right? So we're going to go over here. Um, it's not going to be in the root directory, right? So let me go out here. I'm going to go back to my normal user called eBrower. Where am I? I am in eBrower. You can see my backups are there. Um, I also have my backups on my you know, USB, so I actually did follow instructions. Guys, it's not just here. Let me go to Downloads. There is the thing that I just downloaded. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have to use some of those archive uh, commands that I learned up in Investigation 2 uh, to basically unpack this and start using this into in some way that I can you know, actually install. Okay, so I'm not going to give you any tips on that. You'll have to actually follow the investigation to steps to figure out what to do. Uh, but at the end of it, you should have something like this. So what do we see? We see the original tar.gz. I'm going to hold on to that just in case something goes wrong. But um, I also have this directory called L breakout. So let me just uh, type in the first couple characters and then I'll tab 
and then I'll get into this and what you can do is you can read the source code if you really feel like it you can learn about the authors and you can read all news and read me and stuff like that but uh, not, not too interested into it um, so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to run configure and make so if you remember hopefully you do um, or maybe you were never taught but the two ampersands here are basically going to chain two commands together so the first thing I want to do is run configure and if configure succeeds if it returns uh, an exit code of zero um, which means it's successful hopefully um, then it will also run make so we'll see what happens when we do this um, and we see that we, you know, we were not successful. So we never even got to the step where we're making anything. Um, we're getting configuration errors over here about this stuff. So what we find is no acceptable C compiler found in path. So we're going to have to figure out a way of uh, fixing that. So let's just follow the instructions here. You'll notice that this is a different way of um, installing software. And, okay, I need to be root to actually run this. So what I'm going to do is log back in as root, but maybe I don't want to switch back to my root directory. I want to stay where I am. So hopefully you remember that um, that's what's going to happen if you omit the dash. Not only is it handy as a quiz question, but it's also something that will make your life a bit easier. So we're going to run this. And we're going to say yes. You can see that uh, this group install has quite a bit of different tools in it. And we're not going to be using too many of them, but I think the one that we're going to be using is probably GCC. Although I haven't read ahead, so I can't tell you exactly. Um, we'll just wait for this to complete and then we'll proceed. So what is the next step? Well, what we're basically going to try to do is um, configure and make this again. So when we run it, it's going to look... Uh, different from before and you will get an error saying like uh, something is needed so we talked about dependencies before um, dependencies are missing so we have this uh, libz here and we're gonna have to try and find it so luckily for you um, a lot of the lab has the information that you need um, before going and installing some of these uh, dependencies that uh, you need, uh, I thought it would take a moment just to uh, take a do a yum info on this uh, zlib, and you can see exactly what we are installing. So keep in mind how easy it was just to do yum install on a certain program and just grab it from the repositories along with all the dependencies um, that you need all in one go um, so you can see why this is you know uh, nice to work with so I'm gonna go in ahead and install the um, package that's going to provide us with the libz that we need to try and uh, configure and make this so we'll see where we get stuck this time and you can see that we're gonna need something with libpng so We'll just go and install this as well. So, actually, I'll show you this quickly. Uh, this isn't in the notes, but this is the way that you would do it, basically. Um, you might do something like a yum search libpng. And what you would get back, or what you will get back, is probably a long list of um, things that are just matching this pattern so they might not necessarily be the things that we're actually looking for 
Uh, but in this list, actually, we do see what we are looking for, which was which would be libpng development uh, dot x86 64. Since this is a 64-bit operating system we're working with, that's the one we're looking for. But if we just go and do you know yum install libpng development, uh, we will get the package that we need. And we can do uh, one more of these just to be grabbing, I guess, what would be SDL development. Um, but if you feel like you know going and doing the trial and error thing and seeing um, each of these packages um, as they come in and then installing them, you get an idea of how, how building things from source can be kind of um, uh, a little bit of an annoyance, but also kind of an interesting exercise. So I'm going to go and grab this. I'm going to say yes. And also, once it succeeds, you feel like you actually accomplished something. And we're done. OK, so time to give it another go. OK. Now we get here, and it's kind of sometimes kind of hard to difficult to parse exactly what happened, but let's give it a shot, yeah? So we were not successful just to running it now because there's one more step that we got to do. We got to get into here, and we're going to run make install. Now we can give it another shot. Okay, so you saw me hit an error and I stopped the video to figure out what was going on, but um, here's maybe another example where tabbing will save your life. So let me do this. Um, so I start the which command. You remember we started this exercise with the which command, basically confirming that there was nothing there, right? Um, and then I started typing in L breakout and hit tab. And actually, what it auto completed to was L breakout 2. And we can see that it actually exists in user local bin L breakout 2. So we took all this stuff, we compiled it, and then during the installation, we threw it into a new directory called user local bin L breakout 2. So hopefully, at the very end of this, we get a game. So if you got to this point, um, your exercise was complete and you can feel free to celebrate with a quick game of L Breakout 2 I suppose. So anyway um, this is the end of this part over here. Um, what they're gonna ask you to do is generate yet another um, uh, shell script um, just sort of implementing some of the stuff that you've learned today and at the very end, you'll have to go through a Lab 3 sign-off. So same practice as before. Run this wget to grab the uh, check script. You will need to have your CentOS 3 uh, running and C7 host, I believe. And the checks are just going to be checking both of these machines. So hope that went well for you.